Hello and welcome to Taste Buds. I'm Terry Bayes. I'm a food critic on the Central Coast. Each week, I share my dining experiences with a partner who I call my Taste Bud. Now I'm sharing my rarest Epicurean delights with you. My culinary tourism has taken me to some wonderful restaurants, both big and small. Join us while my buds and I taste the world. Today we're in Grover Beach, California for one of my small finds. I spent a month in Thailand and to say I know Thai food is pretty accurate. So when we came back, I found this treasure in Bun Thai. So today I'm gonna take my chef friend, Greg Wangard from Gardens of Avila, and he's gonna experience all the amazingness of Bun Thai. Come on in and join us. Kung Fu Ka. Jay Zay Ray? Yeah. So what do you got? Oh, no, that's This is Tommy, this is Greg. Bad. So Greg has his own garden and herbs and things, so I wanted him to try your food because yours is an even different twist on herbs and stuff. And what are you making for us today? Right. Today I'm going to show you a couple you know, um, dishes. But the first one is called hormone seafood. We're going to make it from ground up. You know. We have to prepare the curry paste. This one we call the red curry paste. So why the stem versus the leaf? Because the stem is a little more fragrant, you know, stronger flavor yeah. comparing to the leaves. That's why we, we intend to use the root. That's a strongest, you know, flavor. Got it. All the flavor. We use the couple lamb leaves. We you mush. I have to keep pouching, you know, keep pouching. Yeah. About yeah. half an hour or 25 minutes at least. Okay. The reason because we run uh, every herb and ingredient release the oil slowly, you know, make it settle, you know. Like my grandma said, you know, you have to do that, they don't let me use the blender because the flavor is going to be, you know, not authentic, not, you know, not the same, like. The and grandma was know. right, right? Uh, I think so. <laughs> <laughs> and then be careful, it might scratch and then get yeah. into your eye. Yeah. Oh my God, it's a big deal. <laughs> So when, you, so when you mash this, is there any, is there any Rarely do new restaurants dazzle me. Seldom am I so taken by an eatery that I dine there four times in one week. But I found a rare treat in Bun Thai Bistro. What's it called again? What are you making next? Harmok. H-O-R-M-O-K. Harmok. Harmok, yeah. Harmok. Har is when you wrap, you know, mok is when you dump everything together in the pan. They offer Thai and Asian fusion dining experience with a vibrant feel that has delighted this girl's palate. Let's see what I have a lot of flavor in the So more of the more of this dish for dinner or for lunch? Uh, you know what? I can eat this one even in the morning time. I can yeah. breakfast. Yeah, it's yeah, got an egg in it. Yeah. Yeah. You have to eat it with rice. Yeah. You know? Bun uses organic, natural, and local ingredients and some Thailand treats that my taste bud had missed. And then Is that lemongrass. It's a little chai. It's a Thai okay. ginger. Okay. And oh, I smell that. that. That's one of the things that's nice about here is you get the consistent product every single time. Yeah. Whatever you try is always exactly the same and wonderful. I spent a month in Thailand eating my way through the jungle, and to say I know Thai food is no thin story. We'll be right back with more Taste Buds. We're excited to try all of those dishes that we just saw. Yeah, that was really cool to go back and see the kitchen, all the raw ingredients in their little tray, and then to, you know, to pound the paste like that and to <laughs> I make knew it. you'd like, like that. I mean, it's, You made it 15 minutes, right? Yeah, I mean, I could have it'd probably been like another half an hour to make it how they had it. But uh, it really gives an authentic feel um, to their heritage of how it's done and that they still do it that way. And all the um, different spices that I've never even heard of or seen. Yeah, and ingredients too. I mean, different types of ginger. But it looked like a big ginger root, except it had this like amazing um, you said perfume, perfume. Uh, characteristic to it that ginger doesn't. But then it had like the spice and the burn of ginger. Nice, so, well, yeah, I can't wait. Pretty, it's always exciting when you see and taste a different ingredient that right. you've never you know, used before. And it is always exciting to taste something new. So everybody remember that. Tasting something new is good and something you should try to do. Every day. Right? For sure. <laughs> Tommy! Right. Yay! Oh, that yeah. looks beautiful. My first appetizer is uh, fresh avocado served with ginger sauce, fresh strawberry rolls served with the tamarind sour sauce. 
And this is a uh, rice paper. It's a rice paper wrap with a spring mix vegetable, with ginger, cucumber, you know, and then you know, top with avocado or strawberry. Perfect for a yeah. hot day. Thanks, man. All right, Thank you. Guy. So, so this is a, a Thai chili. That I'm crazy for. I put it on everything because um, there's there's Thai hot, there's American hot, and so this is Thai hot. And then so that's, this is the hot. I love hot food. Yeah, yeah. The, you'll so go crazy is, for that. The, yeah. This is the. This is just the dry. Of hot. This is the dry red pepper. And and all over Thailand, they always have this, so you can add more to it. Oh, this I gotta say, that's condimentary. This yeah. is uh, the hot sauce. Yes. Kind of like garlic a little bit. Again, red sauce, add spice, you know. Um, we have a couple more on the tray. Yeah. I'll be Vanna White. Right. This one, is, uh, <laughs> this one we call like vinegar, jalapeno, like pickle, you know, and oh, yeah. sour. <laughs> You're putting too much water there. Let's oh, okay. everything up. Uh, and then we have the, the chili flake, you know, mm. the smoky crust. And then the, just the, the soy sauce. The soy sauce. Okay, yeah. And there's salt, pepper, and always sugar. <laughs> always sugar. Because they add sugar to it. So I'm going to try it first with no spice. Mm -hmm. Coconut milk is like comfort food to me. Yeah. I swear, I was born and raised somewhere where there was coconuts. But I wasn't. <laughs> I love it with that spice in there. It's so good. good. Yeah, this, I can, I, whenever I come here and eat, I put it all over my food and then I take some to go. Because you can't find that anywhere. Yeah. That kind of burn and that kind of spice, I've never seen anywhere else. Or just some good coconuts. <laughs> oh, that is good with the spice. You were right. I hate admitting that, but you were right. It's good. It's just like, it carries the flavors all the way down. Mm -hmm. and that's why I love, like, I love heat and spice and chilies. It's, We'll be right back with more Taste Buds. The first one we call drunken noodles ah. of Hakimau. The reason behind it is because it's supposed to be very hot, you know, uh, from the Thai chili to just uh, wake up for the person who got drunk and then pass out. But this one is just my version, so... <laughs> so this is a hangover cure. Well, yeah, right. Okay. Well, it, it is 2 o'clock in the afternoon, so chances are <laughs> I was drunk, passed out, and I'm ready for this. Okay. Better go get a couple more items for you, okay? Okay. All right. Drunken noodles. This is one of my favorite dishes. So they have these great lunch specials here where you can come in and it's three dishes. So you get a soup, a salad, and then two of the, uh, the dishes on there, and I, it's $8.95. Oh so gosh. if you haven't tried Thai food, this is a place to start. So you can have three or four and different flavors. And you get, you get it just like that, like the appetizer, the soup that we just had, and then right. two of these? And two of these. They're smaller. For, for nine smaller. bucks? For nine bucks, I know. And you get the, all the taste of Thailand in one wonderful lunch. Something with Thai custom. Oh, okay, that's I'm right. By the corner, so. Wow. Oh. It's beautiful. It's so good for you. Yeah, so you just pour the custard right in the pumpkin and, and let it go. For an hour. So this would be basically just a really light lunch. <laughs> yeah, this is a very <laughs> light lunch. <laughs> this is a typical lunch yeah. for me. <laughs> but you come in and you leave with five boxes. Exactly. <laughs> I mean, even when we come in for lunch, we'll still leave with boxes because the food, they give you so much food here and it's all mm -hmm. so wonderful. And the thing is, is this stuff as leftovers is even better. Mm -hmm. It really, because all the flavors kind of set yeah, in. Yeah, a lot of the spice and um, chili and stuff like that, it's like, <clears throat> Soak into the food that they're cooking, and it's a little more depth of flavor the next day. Exactly. Yeah, what's in that one? That's that red curry sauce with chicken, the green beans, green peppers, and then the kefir lime. That's one of my favorite. Yeah. And it's almost got a peanuty. It's the curry and the peanuty, and that's one of the things I like in Thai is they infuse peanuts into a lot of this stuff and the coconuts, and it's this tropical feel to it. So we have lots for you to choose from here. We have the drunken noodles, the fried rice, the seafood if you're feeling brave and adventurous. So I want you to come in, try a few of these dishes, and I want you to go onto the Facebook fan page and tell us what you think. You become the critic. Um, tell us what you think of the rice, whether you wanted more spice, if you the tried all these things. Too. Yeah, the rice is really good. Um, and so it's your chance to come out, try new things. It, it's not all hot. If you just let Tommy know you're a vegetarian or a vegan or gluten-free or all those other things, they will make it especially for you and tell you exactly what you can have. So this is a place to come to try new flavor palettes, especially if you have a limited um, dietary needs. And it is, is my favorite with the with the egg in there and the uh, and the seafood and the coconut. Mm -hmm. It's very, very, very different. 
I mean, you've got Let's all sorts of... Let's get a chunk of coconut there. See that young yeah. coconut, how it's like sort of gelatinous and Yeah, and flavorful. beautiful. Mm -hmm. Good flavor. Oh. I think that's my favorite. Mm. Green mussels, calamari, shrimp. That's my favorite. Dessert? Mm-hmm. All righty. So on dessert, I mean, we saw them pour the custard and the pumpkin. And a lot of Latino cultures, they basically take pumpkin with like brown sugar and spices and sort of saute it or bake it. And so it sort of reminded me of seeing something like that. All right, I'm just gonna take a bite right And they the said eat, the, eat like the squash with yeah, the- Yeah, a little bit of the squash and the custard. Mm. Wow, I didn't expect to like that and I did. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Sweet, it has sort of like that Thai flavor to it, too. Wow. Okay, so I'm like a mango sticky rice girl on my desserts, but I think I'm moving over to the pumpkin. Thank you very much for having us. You're welcome. I think Chef Greg enjoyed it as much as I Thank did. You, man. Yeah. Happy to do yeah, it. Thanks a lot. Kung Fu Ka. Ka Kun Kra. Yeah. So come on down to Grover Beach and try Bun Thai. Get some food, watch the sunset, go to the beach. It's perfect here. Try something new. I task you, I beg you, I implore you because everyone who's ever come here for my recommendation has thanked me and you will too. Thank you for joining us, that was delicious. Please make sure you complete the social media challenge and give me your feedback. Join us next time and see where my palette will lead you. And remember, eat well and live well. Did you know that certain pastas are made to go with certain sauces? Okay, so we're back at the, uh, we have our pasta balls here, dough balls, and we are going to put them through our dough roller, sheeter, and make a long strip, and I'm going to show you how to make raviolis, okay? And we have our pasta sheet once again. So what we're going to do is we're going to put the, we're going to use the stuffing for the ravioli. It could be ricotta cheese, it could be uh, a meat, um, even a shredded chicken, a fish. What I'm going to do is I'm going to mark the center. So I'm just going to give it a little push with my finger. So now I can see where the midpoint is. And I'm going to take some ricotta and I'm going to start to spread. There, there have been people that don't believe that I make raviolis. And uh, I told them if you, if you want to see me make the ravioli, come in on a Wednesday morning to the back door of Roses and you'll, you'll see what we're doing. We're going to take our, take our pasta and we're going to put it over the filling, roll it out, a little bit of flour. And we're going to basically rock and roll. And there you have a tray of raviolis. Now we're going to trim the ravioli. I'll take out some of these parts. Now if you're, if you're doing this at home, you want to leave, leave a few imperfected raviolis so your friends know that they were homemade. You want to be careful not to cut into the belly of the ravioli. That'll cause it to break. So you can see the many different things we can do with the pasta. This is old school ravioli making. They got, I heard they got machines now. That's no fun. So here we have our cheese raviolis that we just made. I broke them up and we're going to go ahead and drop them into the water. Okay. Now we're, we're, we're cooking a stuffed pasta opposed to an unstuffed pasta. So you definitely want it to cook longer. You're probably looking at about eight, nine minutes here. You can, you can fill them with just about anything and that's what makes them so exciting. And you have your cheese ravioli. Simple. Try it at home.
Did you know that certain pastas are made to go with certain sauces? I picked three very simple sauces, but I feel like these are the uh, base sauces from Italy. Or when you look at the Italian flag, you start with green, white, and red. So there's your mother sauces of Italy. You've got your pesto. Now an Italian pesto means blend. So this is a, a basil pesto. Then we have our Alfredo, otherwise known as like a bechamel sauce. And our, of course, marinara sauce. I chose the pesto with the cheese ravioli. The cheese ravioli is very, very delicate. And the pesto has great, uh, great aroma to it. It has the basil. Very important pairing up the right pasta with the right sauce. So here we go. And let's go ahead and toss that. Now pesto with a fresh herb, this is a fresh herb, you don't want to overcook it because you'll, you'll brown it. You just want to heat it up enough. The pasta itself is also heating up. And there we have the uh, cheese ravioli with pesto. The next sauce we're going to do is our Alfredo sauce. This is a, uh, a cream cheese base with a roux, a thickener. So it thickens the Alfredo sauce and um, it'll go perfectly with our fettuccine. Now you can see the weight of the Alfredo is heavy, but the fettuccine is wide. And you can see how one doesn't overpower the other. Such a beautiful dish. And the last item on the list is our marinara sauce, okay? This is, a, um, this is the manicotti we made earlier. I've put it into the oven and I've melted some fresh mozzarella cheese on it. 